All right, friends, welcome back to the garage. We got the caddy in here today. We're going to do some brakes, front brakes to be exact, and we're going to talk about why we change brakes and uh, why I'm changing my brakes, and we're going to have a good time. So grab your cup of coffee, grab a seat. I'm Polly, and this is Polly's Power Hour. So, how, are, how do brakes work? Well, they're hydraulic. Hydraulic uses the movement of fluid to do work, okay? So I drew a neat little diagram here, okay? So, here's the pedal inside the car. When you push it, it pushes this rod into your brake booster. This brake booster is powered by vacuum, and it doubles the work of the pedal. You'll notice if you ever try to pump the brakes when the car is off, the pedal gets really hard really fast. This helps double the work of you pushing the brake, which reduces fatigue on the driver over the course of a long trip. Now, that rod carries through into the master cylinder where the fluid is. Now this is a sealed system, okay? There's no air pockets anywhere. You have to bleed all the air out and we'll talk about that later. Once you get to the master cylinder, there's a plunger right here and that plunger pushes the fluid out, pushes, well, exerts pressure on the fluid, which create, pressure moves through the brake lines. Okay, so this is the back of the car, this is the front of the car. The caddy has rear drum brakes and front disc brakes. Front disc brakes are great, they're very efficient, they're awesome. Rear disc brakes would be great too, but drum brakes are just fine for what I'm doing, and it stops the caddy just fine. She's a 4,000 pound boat. 3,800 pound boat, but whatever. So, for a traditional disc brake setup, for this caddy, you've got caliper, the fluid comes, well the fluid will actually come into like right here, but you've got the pads, and then you've got a piston in here, and that piston, when you push the pedal, that piston goes out and exerts pressure on the pads which squeezes the rotor. This is the brake rotor right here. The rotor is attached to the wheel. That's the rotor right here. As the car moves forward and you're trying to stop it, this friction turns the forward momentum into heat stopping the car. It, it squeezes the, the, the rotor and stops the car. Okay, that's a traditional disc brake setup. We'll go over that more once we get, uh, get to the car. For drum brakes, you've got the hub. Now, I'm not going to take any drum brakes apart today. We'll do that in a different video because I'm going to have to do that on this eventually. And that's a, a process. But just to give you an idea, you've got the shoes, right? So you got two shoes here and here. They're connected with a spring and an adjuster. This is your wheel cylinder. When you step on the brake pedal, that fluid comes through and exerts pressure on the wheel cylinder. That wheel cylinder expands pushing the shoes out, so the shoes will come out like this, and the drum, which is around here, then that forward energy gets transferred into, uh, gets turned into friction and stops the car. Okay, so that's basically how brakes work, if you didn't know. If you did know, well, it's a good refresher. And you could have fast forwarded through this entire part here. I have don't, no idea where I'm going to put this. Okay. okay. Uh, let's talk about safety. So I'm going to lift the car up. We're going to put it on jack stands. I'm going to set the parking brake. And I'm going to use a wheel chalk to block the rear wheels so the car won't roll away while I'm working on it. Uh, as far as a tire, I usually wear you know a disposable, semi-disposable shirt. Uh, I've got a t-shirt on under this in case I get too hot. I always wear long jeans. And today, um, I'm kind of living dangerously. I'm wearing shoes. Usually, I wear boots. Um, just in case I drop something on my foot, it won't hurt. Uh, I would remove rings and watches because you're going to be using uh, brake parts cleaner. And this stuff is very, uh, it's not, it's caustic. Uh, it'll actually kind of burn your hands. Uh, sensitive areas. I mean, my hands are kind of used to it by now. Uh, you'll find any cuts 
you have, any wounds with brake cleaner, because it'll burn the crap out of them. Uh, I always wear, and you'll see me wearing some rubber gloves when I'm dealing with brake cleaner and brake fluid. It's because brake fluid is really weird on the skin, and uh, it's not good for you. So, music, playing, good rag, always handy. And let's take another sip of coffee, and we're going to go put this thing in the air and get to work. Well, there's Rocky, he's supervising. Alright, so wheel chalk, and I have a string, and you're going to wonder what the hell the string's for. Uh, two reasons. One, it's to remind me that I did indeed put a wheel block behind the wheels. And two, it's so if I'm by myself, uh, I can just undo it and, you know, roll the car forward a little bit, yank the rope, and I'll get the wheel block out from under the car. Alright, now parking brake is set and the one thing I want to do with the caddy is she has uh, electronic leveling and what's going to happen is when I put the front of the car in the air the back end is going to sink and it's going to think that I put a heavy load in the back of the car and it's going to make the compressor run uh, basically endlessly. 12 is electronic level control so we'll take 12. And we'll put that on the center hump right here. One, so I don't step on it. And two, when I sit back in the car, I remember that I did it. All right, so that's done. We All right, now, jacking points of everybody's vehicle will differ. See this? This is, this is what happens. Yep, thank you. Thank you for the sugar. Oh, I love you so much. Yes, I do. Okay. YouTube doesn't want to see your booty. Yep. All right. So the caddy has actually got this really nice... Um, cross member right here it's all it's steel it's frame so i can just go to that cue the music all right for jack stand placement i elected to go with See these frame horns right here? Okay, this is the radiator core support right here. And these frame horns, so this is this is nice, strong, and sturdy. All right, let's grab the impact gun. And let's zip these wheels off and see what we're looking at here. All right, so here we are at the first wheel. We're going to do the driver's side. Uh, here's what I recommend. I recommend only taking apart one side at a time. You can take both tires off, but don't take apart both sides at the same time, especially when you do drum brakes. Because there's a lot of little widgets and crap that, uh, you know, if you've never done drum brakes before and never done disc brakes before, you know, one side at a time would be great because you have the other side to look at. And that kind of gives you an idea of, of what you're looking at. So, but you take the center cap off. And then that reveals your lug nuts. So here's what we're looking at. Here's your classic disc brake. Okay, here's your piston. Your piston exerts pressure on the pad, which then exerts pressure on this rotor. Now you can see this rotor is really uh, worn. It's beat up. Uh, it's probably warped as hell, which is why I'm changing it. You can, I don't know if you can really even see. You just, it looks like a record. Now, changing versus turning. There is such a thing as what's called turning rotors and basically what will happen is if they're just lightly worn you can take them to a machine shop or sometimes your local auto parts store will do it as well and they'll put it on a um, a machine and it will a lathe really and it will shave the surface of the rotor surfacing it and giving you an even surface to bite to you want an even surface now the problem is if you look, you see there's only so much thickness, right? Now, as you start shaving, you're going to run into what's called minimum thickness. Now, every manufacturer has a minimum thickness. It's in the factory service manual. We can look it up. Um, if the rotors aren't as bad as this, and they measure out, and they can take off enough and leave me enough for uh, what's called run out, 
then I'll turn a set of rotors once. Uh, I won't turn them more than once, and nine times out of ten, the price of rotors has come down so much that it's worth a peace of mind to just replace them. You know, so that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and replace these. Yeah, while we're here, uh, inspect everything, right? So here's your, your soft brake line. You can see the, the sheathing here is a little worn and broken. Now the brakes still work obviously, but the sheathing in these brake lines are from 1991. So to be honest with you, uh, I'm probably going to go online and source some uh, brake hoses. And when I do the rear brakes, I am going to just go ahead, bite the bullet, redo everything, and bleed the brakes because peace of mind. This is my daily driver. The strut assembly looks pretty good. Everything else is tight. This is my, my anti-lock brake line, which I do have an ABS light. Uh, we'll talk about that later. So you do want to look at your axle boots, which are here. Okay, you want to look for tears, any exposure, any grease coming out of them, which would be bad. It's a sign that you're, uh, you're getting dirt and grime into your CV axles. Uh, I'm probably going to do front struts before too long, so I'm going to do front struts, do the sway bar end links, do the uh, brake lines, just kind of like a general refresh, because all of this, except for the brake rotors and pads, are original from 91. So let's get some tools, figure out what I need, get this rotor off, get this, or get the caliper off, get the rotor off, compress the rotor, and we'll go from there. All right, so GM, a lot of the times in the 80s, used these uh, uh, Allen heads. So, go ahead and... to go fast music so here we are um, let's see the pads a little worn okay that happens you get some life left to them though which is good all right now we will say we will we will make note that the wear indicator which is this little guy right here he kind of squeaks against the rotor when uh, when the material on the pad gets too low, and that's kind of an indication that, uh, you know, it's time to change your brakes. It's also pretty important that you support the caliper. Why? Because it's attached with a rubber line, and you don't want to break that rubber line, because then you got to find a new one. You can do it with zip ties, you can do it with wire coat hanger, welding wire, mechanics wire, whatever you want to use. But most people just have easy access to zip ties so there we go and I see this one here it's a little more worn and then the rotor literally just slides right off no play As soon as, as soon as I do this, you see the shaft move, which means the splines, everything in here is good, the shaft is good. No excessive play, that means the bearings are all good. All right, we're good to go here. Sweet. Okay, so here we are. We are now ready to start uh, putting this back together. Gloves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this can of brake cleaner. You're going to probably use a can of brake cleaner per side. And we're going to put it on. And hey, look at that, it fits. Now, if you notice, it kind of, see how it does that? Easy solution is you take a lug nut. You put a lug nut on here to help hold the rotor in place. So there's a coating on this. It's called, uh, well, we used to call it Cosmoline, like a machine shop would put on something called Cosmoline. And 
that's not good. It's sticky and it's not good for brakes. So you use the brake cleaner. Now you can use a seat clamp. You can use, you know, there's a lot of different things you can use to compress a brake caliper. Uh, I bought this neat little tool from Sears, it's a Craftsman. Hopefully Sears is around a little bit longer. But uh, so it says face towards piston. I like to sometimes use the old pad. You put the old pad on here, you stick that in there, and it gives you a nice even surface to compress the caliper with. All right. I would advise against using an impact gun because with an impact gun, you're not going to feel if there's any kind of tension or anything in your caliper. If you're not putting the caliper piston in straight, that's not good. And if you hammer it in with an impact, that's even worse. That means you're going to need new calipers. And I'm not looking to buy new calipers. So I'm going to do this by hand. So you tighten this up. So, as you can see, now the piston is compressed, and it pulls all the way through. Lubricated. What else isn't good is these are the wrong damn pads. Yep. Well, it was about this time that I realized that the uh, brake pads that I got from the local auto parts store were wrong. It turns out that my caddy has the rarest brake package uh, ever. So they ordered the pads, we'll be here in the morning, no big deal, this sort of thing happens. So what am I going to do? Well, she's hanging out of the garage and I could drive the truck tomorrow if I wanted to, but I got to put this back together anyway, at least put the wheel on. So I might as well just put it back together and drive it. It's fine. The brakes just pulse a little bit. No big deal. I'll get the pads in the morning. I'll come back. We'll get back on here and we'll do 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 do. We'll do this and we'll get to we'll get her done. But you want to put the old rotor back on. You don't want to put the new rotor on with the old pads because it'll groove the new rotor. You want to put the new rotor on with the new pads. Okay. So. Installation opposite removal of the old parts, I guess. In the ground. Um, the master cylinder cap is back on. Now, this is very important, and I'm gonna tell you about this twice because this is how important it is, right? So, first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this fuse back in, and put the fuse box back together. Now, because you compressed well, because I compressed the one caliper, okay? You're gonna need to take up that space. So if you watch, when I pump the brake, it's gonna go right to the floor. See, there's no resistance, right? So you wanna pump your brake up. Now, you, now, I don't know if you can tell, but right now it's hard, okay? So 
you're preloading the caliper. I can't tell you how many people I've seen do their brakes and then not pump the brake up because they've done, say, all four wheels. Like if you have four wheel disc, right? So you, all four pistons are compressed and they drop the car in reverse and burp, out they go. And then they're like, oh no, I don't have any brakes because they're pumping uh, frantically, right? So always, 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 always pump your brakes. Make sure they're nice and hard like this. And we're gonna do it tomorrow after I replace the brakes because I'm getting the right pads tomorrow and we're gonna knock this out.